This is the story of the Spinifex Express, an isolated railway that once ran through some of the most remote country in our continent. But when it finally got up steam in 1911, the train ran through Nyamal country, in the heart of the Pilbara. This was and still is land that Aboriginal people have lived in for 40,000 years. But their way of life suddenly changed when white fellows came into their country, the Pilbara, in the late 19th century. The white fellows had come to set up sheep stations on the vast Pilbara plains. Later, they were joined by gold prospectors, hungry for the precious metal. The rush started in 1888, when gold was found at Pilbara Creek, and soon came another rush to Marble Bar in 1891. But faced with big distances, prospectors needed transport and supplies to work the newfound gold fields. But for 20 years, horses, camels and donkeys were their only means of carrying anything anywhere. Roads then were just tracks. Rail alone could take and bring equipment and supplies from the nearest harbour, Port Hedland, a 140-kilometre journey through rough, harsh and often hot and dry country. Pastoralists too supported the idea of a rail line. Miners wanted timber for their mine shafts and pastoralists needed to get their wool away to market. But it took 20 years to determine the route and get the railway built. And it might not have happened, but for one man's efforts... In 1903, prospector James Isdell contested a by-election, won the Pilbara seat in the WA Parliament, and argued strongly for the line. He had a motive. Some Aboriginal people had worked on stations, and others were now working in the gold and tin fields, prospecting for surface nuggets and yandying for tin. But by the turn of the century, many had been displaced from their country and were not part of a station workforce. Older and unemployed people struggled to survive in ration camps at Marble Bar. Isdell saw the railway as offering them employment, and small numbers of Aboriginal people did get work on the line over the years. His mission achieved, Isdell retired from Parliament, went prospecting for tin, and became a protector of Aborigines in the Pilbara. But it took another six years to get the work started. To supply the proposed line, Port Hedland needed a new jetty to land essential supplies, like the water tanks railway engineers needed to feed the locomotives. But steam still needed animal power to haul all this into place, and the line itself needed timber for its sleepers, rails and fuel to power its hungry engines. The track once laid, the Spinifex Express ran across tidal flats near the coast and on into harsh terrain in the dry season. The word Pilibara, Pilbara, means dry in the two local languages. But the Pilbara's annual wet posed other problems. Flooded creeks could stop or slow a train or wash away a whole track. It was easier to lay the line across the river itself rather than bridge it. Chains anchored the rails to pillars driven deep into the riverbed. That way they didn't disappear down the creek. But the line didn't just carry gold. And it didn't always use steam. This motorised Kalamazoo was light enough to cross wet riverbeds where heavy trains could not, get the doctor to a patient and workers out to repair a broken or washed away line but the Kalamazoo paled by comparison with the larger Red Terror. A unique rail coach, powered by a Dodge petrol motor, was purpose-built in Midland in 1935 and brought in to reduce running costs. The Red Terror could travel at 45 kilometres an hour and carry passengers in greater safety and with some degree of comfort. Just as well because under steam power, the Spinifex Express in its regular weekly run took all day to travel from Port Hedland to Marble Bar. There was a lunch stop for passengers at the Shore River siding, in the shade of the water tank stand, and on reboarding, they had the luxury of a toilet and wash basin. But by the 1940s, World War II and 30 years of hard wear on the route had taken toll of the Spinifex line. After Japanese raids on the northwest, a joint US Air Force RAAF base was set up at Corona Downs, 
35 kilometres south of Marble Bar. Increased journeys from the port to Marble Bar, taking fuel and bombs for their aircraft, worsened an already degraded track and wore out rolling stock, as well as crews. With the war ended, the government decided to provide an all-weather road to replace the train. But the train kept running until 1951, mainly to bring the town of Port Hedland water from the Shore River tanks. But before long, the rolling stock and lines were sold for scrap. The Spinifex Express had run for 40 years along the most isolated rail route in Australia. Today, only faint traces of the Spinifex Express and its line remain. But its memory survives in song. Rambo, Rambo, Manango, Rambo, 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 Rambo,